quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and today we are playing with the Dresden Plate 18 degree ruler. I can't wait to show you what this does or the quilt that I made with this. So make sure you head to the description box and get the link so you can see that quilt pattern. If you catch that quilt pattern in the first month, it's free for you, so make sure you sign up and get your free ruler of the month pattern. Before we get into all the details of this ruler, I do want to make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any of the quilting goodness that I have for you. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that bell. I can wait for a second. Once you've done that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that these are good quilting videos and they should show more of them to more people. So that thumbs up helps me and helps quilters find this channel as well. And as you watch, if you have any questions or comments, there's a comment box. Feel free to type in your comments and I get notified when you leave comments. So I'll try to get you an answer as soon as I can. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get started in using the 18 degree Dresden plate ruler by Creative Grids. This is the 18 degree circle segment ruler and it's a Creative Grids ruler. It actually comes as two parts. And one of the interesting things about this ruler is it actually doesn't have a hole for hanging. So what I do is I just take these two parts and I put them together with a binder clip and that keeps the two parts together and I have a little spot that I can hang it on my pegboard. So that's perfect for keeping the two parts of this ruler together. Now the first part of the ruler is this wedge piece and just like all Creative Grids rulers it has this grippy that keeps it in place on our fabric and this cuts wedges that we can use in different ways. We can use them as tumbler shapes or we could use them as Dresden plates. And you can use these as the, the petals or the blades of your Dresden plate. Um, you can sew the top, which is what we're going to do today, into that really distinctive point for a Dresden plate. Or you could leave them flat. You can tuck them under or raw edge applique. There's so many different options, ways that you can use a ruler like this one. So we're going to start with our fabric and I have two pieces of fabric. These are five and a half inches and I have just stacked them on top of one another. And I'm going to start on one end. We're going to cut off the side. Now we can spin this around. And now we can be cutting from the right side, which is going to be a lot more comfortable than trying to cut from that left side. I have my spot on dot that we can use. We're lining up the bottom right here. And then with our spot on dot, we'll be able to see that five and a half inch mark on the top. And with lining those two up along with lining up this edge, we can cut. And because I'm cutting two layers of fabric, I will have my two wedges. To make a full circle with this ruler, you need 20 of the Dresden petals. So you'll keep cutting down your strip until you have enough. You can also make half Dresdens, which are 10 petals, and quarter Dresdens, which are just five petals. You can use just two fabrics like I am here to get an alternating effect. You could use all of the same fabric, or you could use multiple different fabrics for a scrappy look. But remember that there are 20 petals in a circle. So if you use three fabrics, you won't be able to alternate every third because 20 does not divide by three evenly. So if you wanted something that alternated, you could do two, you could do four, you could do five different fabrics to have something that alternates evenly, but you could not do three. So I'm just gonna keep going and cut all the way down my strip until I have my 20 petals. So I have my Baby Lock Jubilant here, and I'm going to go ahead and sew the tips of these Dresdens and all I'm doing is I'm just folding it in half 
along this top straight edge and matching up those points. Then putting my presser foot down and with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just gonna stitch down the edge. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna use that reverse button to just reverse back and then go forward again because I want to lock my stitches on that fold. Locking your stitches on your fold will make sure that your point on your Dresden stays put and doesn't pop open. So we're going to go ahead and continue this process on all 20 pieces, folding them in half, feeding them in the machine, and stitching that quarter inch seam, making sure to lock our stitches on that fold. Now on this fold side where we've locked our stitches, we're going to cut in and you wanna make sure not to cut your threads. We're cutting a couple threads above our stitch line. And we're just cutting off that corner and that's going to redu reduce the bulk when we flip these right side out. Once you've cut off your triangle points, we're going to open and it's still inside out, but we're going to finger press this seam open. Just kind of pinch it between your fingers because we'll want this to be flat and it's easier to kind of pre-crease it now before we flip it right side out. A point turning tool is going to be really handy for flipping it right side out because you just grab it between your thumb and index finger and just flip it right through. And if you grab a point turner, you can then just pop that point and make it nice and sharp. And then we'll be able to press these flat with our iron. You definitely do not want to grab your scissors and try to poke that with your scissors because that sharp point on your scissors is going to poke right through and ruin your pretty perfect point. So there we go. Now we're just going to go ahead and flip all of these right side out and then give them all a press. Now that we have all our Dresden points made, we're going to stitch them together. We're going to stitch them into pairs and then stitch those pairs together into sets of four and then add one more petal to make a set of five. Four sets of five would be four quarters and those will make our block. So I want to set aside two of one color and two of another color. If you're doing some other combination rather than two colors, you want to lay out your pieces and make sure that you are stitching them together in the order that you want to stitch them together. In this case, I can just set aside and I can stitch into pairs. You're going to place them right sides together and here's the important part. You care most about having these two folds line up. If it doesn't line up perfectly down here, it's okay because it's gonna get covered. So we're gonna put this underneath the sewing machine, press our foot down, and then just like we did before when we had a fold, we're going to go front and back on that fold to lock that in. And then we're gonna stitch these together with a quarter inch allowance. When you do this, make sure that you always have, so in this case, I always have my dark on top. So when I put my pairs together, I'll have a dark on the right and a light on the left, because otherwise that might mess with you when you're trying to put your pieces together. So just keep your one color on top, color A, dark, whatever it is, all the way throughout stitching these. There we go. And we're gonna keep stitching like this all through our sets of petals. 
and we can put these pairs together like this in the exact same way we just did and now we're making sets of four. Once we have our four sets of four, we have our four pieces we set aside. We're going to add a light strip to one side of two of them, and we're going to add a dark strip to the other side of two, and that way we'll have four sets of five. We have our four sets of five, and two of them will have a light on each side, two of them will have a dark on each side, and that's exactly what we need. Now we're gonna take this to our pressing mat, and we're gonna press all of these seams open. There we go, seams pressed open on the back and pressed nice and smooth on the front. I'll do that with the other three. So now we wanna take our pieces and check them for a square. You just want to line them up against two lines on your cutting mat and see how far off they are to being square. And this actually looks pretty clean. I'm not upset with that at all. This one might need a little bit of trimming right there, but I'm okay with it. This one could be trimmed. So I'll set that one aside for trimming. And that one yeah, that one's borderline. To square up our Dresden block, we're going to place it on two lines like this. We're going to grab our square. Line everything up. And trim on two sides. And now we know that this will go together really cleanly when we put it together with the other pieces. To stitch our quarters together to make halves, we're going to select two and make sure that you've got a dark and a light coming together here. You're going to put them right sides together. And then we're going to stitch down this seam. Same as we have all the other times giving ourselves a little back stitch at the beginning. And then we're going to do the same with our other set. We'll quickly go ahead and press these seams open. Now we're going to, we're going to check for straight one more time on these. And because some of them were just a little bit off, that compounded to make them a lot more off when I put the quarters together. So I'll definitely want to straighten up this edge. If you choose not to straighten up this edge, you'll have a Dresden that won't lay flat when it's all done. It'll have a bubble in it. So you want to make sure that you do take the minute to go ahead and square these up. Now we can take our two halves, dark and light, dark and light, put them together, and stitch to make our finished Dresden. So we have our finished Dresden, but it's not really finished because it has this hole in the middle. So really at this point we just have all of our 20 points stitched together and we need to go ahead and make our center. I have this really cute fabric, by the way, all these fabrics are art gallery fabrics and they're boss cage fabrics by Katerina Rochella. And there's this really cute leopard print that I can fussy cut to make a center for the block. So this center piece, the center template, has lines in it to help me line up where I want the middle to be. And then just with a chalk pencil, 
I'll draw a circle. And then I can cut this out with scissors. Now we have a raw edge circle and we could put this on our block and stitch it with a raw edge, but I wanna have it be a finished edge because I took all the time to finish my edges here, I wanna have this a finished edge as well. There's lots of different ways that you can take a raw edge circle and tuck in the edges. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways and that is I have a piece of fusible interfacing that I have cut with that template as well and I'm putting it right sides together with the fabric circle. So the bumpy part, the part with the adhesive is up, it's not towards the fabric. Now I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and with my quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the way around. When you're sewing a circle, feel free to lift up that presser foot to just adjust if it's going at all off track, even the slightest. And pick up your presser foot a bunch of times as needed. It's definitely not a knock on your skills if you're picking this up a lot. Now when we flip it right side out, we have a lot more fabric on the outside that needs to get tucked into the inside. So you can use like regular scissors and cut notches in this and notch the curve. But my preference here is to use a pair of pinking shears and cut all the way around. I find this faster. You wanna make sure that you're cutting still a couple threads away from your stitching. You definitely don't want to cut into your stitching. There we go. Now we're going to carefully pinch to pull our two layers apart and just in the interfacing, you want to be careful that you're not cutting your fabric, just in the interfacing cut a hole. And I'm just cutting an X shape in here and I'm going to grab my fabric and push it through that interfacing. to Get everything right side out. My point turner is going to come in handy again and I'm going to use that point turner and I want to have it underneath that seam allowance so I'm putting it up against the fabric. That way I don't accidentally rip a hole in the interfacing. Smooth out that interfacing. And we have our circle. To finish up this circle, I'm going to press the interfacing. Now the bumps are inside, so the interfacing is toward the inside and I'm just gonna use the tip of my iron for a couple seconds, just around this edge. And I'm just trying to capture that edge. And I want to make sure that I'm pulling the interfacing a little bit in. So the interfacing doesn't show on the front, especially when I have a dark fabric like this and it's going on a dark piece like that. And I used a light colored interfacing. I don't want that interfacing to pop out or peek out underneath my circle. So I'm being really careful going just around the edge. I'm just cutting away. That extra interfacing and cutting it down to oh, about a quarter inch seam allowance. If you have thicker interfacing, you definitely want to be really careful about the seam allowance because it might show through on the front. So you don't want jagged bits like this. We'll go through and smooth this out. So I have this all trimmed out. I'll lay it flat on my cutting mat. 
And then with my iron, I can press this smooth and flat. So now I have the two parts of my Dresden and I'm not going to applique my circle down yet. I'm going to first put my Dresden down and then applique my circle down. However, if you wanna make sure that your circle is nicely centered on your piece, when you go to stitch it down, you're gonna fold it in half, make a little crease, fold it in half the other way, lining up your two creases, make another crease, and then you'll line up these creases with the lines on your Dresden to make sure that you're getting everything centered when you stitch this down. Well, there you go. That is the 18 degree Dresden plate ruler by Creative Grids. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you've checked out that description box for the link so that you see the quilt that I made that goes along with this ruler. If you're already subscribed, great job. If you're not, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notifications every time I have a new video. Make sure you've already given this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that this is a cool video and they should show it to more people. And if you have any questions, or comments I'm looking for those go ahead and leave them down in the the comments box all right friends that's it for today I will see you right here real soon bye for now